Listen, the, sure. I don't know if you can talk about this, but I, I, I heard that the uh, medical profession or whatever, somebody decided to change the numbers that, that indicate high blood pressure. They lowered it. So is, do you know anything about that? No, I haven't heard that. I, I know they're... they're I, I know what they thought was high before is really high, and then they, they, they just kind of shrunk the healthy range. But um, yeah. they, they, they've kind of, you know, you got to start with an arbitrary number, and then you have to do a bunch of research to back that number up or to, you know, make sure that that's a valid number. And I think that's what they're doing. They've done the same thing with cholesterol. Cholesterol, that number that we thought, you know, the LDL and the HDL, now they've pretty much figured out they're both kind of, can have a negative impact oh, if really? on a low total number. Uh-huh. So, again, that, that's why you need to get a f- annual physical just to get that kind of stuff checked out. And uh, you know, if you can if you can reduce your risk for heart disease, if you're a man, then you can live you know ten or twenty years longer. It, that's the number one killer for men after a certain age. So yeah, and when you're 63, 20 years <laughs> is probably what you're at, le- at least helpful. For that. That's me. I'm I'm thinking okay, 83. I would think so. Yeah. 83. I mean, yeah. tw- 20. Year, the last 20 years went really fast. They did. So that means sure. the, the next 20 is going to go fast too. But at least I'd like to be here for them. You know what I mean? That, that... Well, and, and and the truth is, is you have to start. You know now, and when you know the earlier you start taking care of yourself and watching your numbers better. So, because the, the, the prolonged uh, high blood pressure and prolonged high cholesterol, you know, not having your diabetes in control, it has a negative impact on your life. So yeah. the sooner you get it under control, the longer you're going to live. What is... Yeah, barring you get, don't get it by a truck. Uh, right, right. Yeah, we're terrorists or something. Yeah, you know, we try our best to keep healthy and safe. Well, so what? Odds of the terrorists are low, but yeah, I mean, no, I, I know. It's just, it's just one. But when you hear it in the news all the time, it's one of those things. Uh, so when when um, people don't donate blood and yeah. and they need surgery all of a sudden, is there something different about their them getting blood like do they have to pay a price for it that differently no, than those no. who donate what is the story there no no um you know we're we're a community blood bank and we were started uh because of really two major factors one is the fda passed a law and said you can no longer pay people to donate blood so back in the early 70s and throughout the 50s and 60s blood donors were paid Right. That's why I still get questions. Oh, are you paid? Do you pay blood donors? And we don't. It's against the law. Um, and so that had a major impact on the amount of donations these local hospitals were receiving. The second thing that happened is there was it, it became very, very difficult to get a unit of blood. So back then, for every unit that you used, you had to get what was called the replacement for that so if you use five units, that means you had to have five donors come in and donate blood to replace oh. the units you used. Wow! Yeah. And yeah. if you didn't, and if you didn't get those individuals, then you had to pay what's called a replacement fee. Um, and so, Life South's never had any replacement fees or anything like that. And, it, um, and the hospitals don't know who's donated blood and who hasn't. And 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 our and our database doesn't connect to their database. I mean, that's that's a HIPAA violation. So uh, you're you're not treated worse if you're a blood if you're a non blood donor. Do you do you think you personally have changed your lifestyle? Because we know you have. You've told us this a few few years ago. You made a decision. Was that decision based on things you see in your profession? Uh, no, because I think you know. I think anybody will say this who's in their profession. You kind of get muted to you know your the things that you see, because you kind of have to in, in a lot of cases. Um, no, I, I just didn't like the way I felt. Um, it was a purely personal decision. That uh-huh, I, I, just, uh-huh. I had no energy. I was tired all the time. My whole body hurt. And I was getting fat. Uh, I just decided I got to change. Hmm. So... Um, so, uh, how, how is the, uh, sorry. Well, good for you, Galen. Oh I think that's wonderful. How, how, you really persevered. How is the uh, blood supply? Yes, very good. You, yeah, you're a role model. You look great. Every time we see you, you look great. 
How is Perfect. how is the blood supply? Joe's losing weight, by the way. He's he's also inspiring me. I got to do something. It's it's. Oh. The, I think it's the tartar sauce. That might be it. You know, maybe that's my downfall. <laughs> uh, look, tartar sauce is really bad for you. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the amount of uh, <laughs> like what you put on the food, right. no matter how healthy it is, right. what you put on the food is is, is horrible. <laughs> Mayonnaise, bacon, all those the fats that are in there. And, and and you really need to look at your sugar intake. That's that's another one that'll. I always really look at it. Go that's straight funny. to fat. <laughs> yeah. <All right>. yeah. <laughs> Analyze it. What's inside that tartar sauce? And how many calories it is? You're eating a beautiful piece of fish that's you know 150 calories and uh, 200 grams of protein, and then you put tartar sauce, and now it's 7,000 calories. <laughs> how is the blood supply today? How are we doing? Oh, uh, we're right at a five-day blood supply. Um, had a really tough day yesterday. Um, just didn't do nearly as well as we expected or it had in the past. But uh, we just need to get out there, give the gift of life, and, and donate blood. That's the bottom line. All right. Um, we want to thank the folks at Palm Garden and Penn Flooring for sponsoring that announcement. After I do this, I kind of have a fun, a fun thing I thought you would like, uh, things that people would be surprised about who don't live in America when they get to know Americans. Mm -hmm. Some things they should be surprised about. Palm Garden of Ocala Health and Rehabilitation Center is at 2700 Southwest 34th Street. Very, very close to where we broadcast here at the mall. Uh, if you get a chance, go over there, take a tour. Um, it is my best recommendation. And don't just walk around and look at the beautiful building and, and take in the, the, the amazingly delicious scent of the uh the kitchen because they always have something good cooking in there chef wendy yeah yeah so but good. Th those are great things but what you really need to do is ask questions about what the facility offers mm -hmm. they they really do offer a therapy that will change your life if if you are a good candidate for that you know everybody isn't and some people are and don't realize they are so that's what i would do i would ask questions and say you know i heard the guy on the radio say 21st century technology what is that just hype or or do you really have something that let them show you what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm only telling you because they showed us, and, and I don't even know how to describe it all because it's kind of well, there's a lot of it. I, if there was only one thing, I could probably tell you, but there's just mm -hmm. a lot of it, and and it's, it's interesting how a video game the size of a wall is not just a game; it's actually therapy. So you, while you're playing a game, your arm is gaining strength or your legs are gaining strength. It's uh, there's a balancing thing there. Yeah, there is. Where you have to line up dots, and it's like you're playing a game by, by shifting your weight. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried this one, Gail? It's kind of fun. It's Hard, big, too. Big TV screen in front of you. Yeah. No, I, I have it. I have not. Well, you're standing on a platform, and, and just a little shift in the weight moves a cursor on the screen. Mm hmm And you have to, like, push things and line things up with just your body weight, not, okay. with, not with hand. It's kind of cool. So anyway, go to Palm Garden. Again, I, I stumble over explaining it all. Just take a tour. Of the, let them show you for, you, for, the, for yourself. And Penn Flooring, that's an easy one. They have great flooring, period. It's durable. They install it. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, it's anything you could imagine for your floor, for your home or your office. They've got it at Penn Flooring. Again, visit them in person. Go to 1201 Southwest 17th Street and see for yourself what we're talking about and see for yourself why we chose Penn Flooring for the flooring here at WOCA. All right. I have the things that would be that would surprise somebody who is kind of trying to figure us out who doesn't live in America, right? Yeah. Um, Americans surprise people from other countries. This is actually based on uh, a survey, by the way. Americans surprise people from other countries with their positive outlook on life. Is it? Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, in the yeah. in the study, so. in the study, Europeans especially have said that Americans surprise them with their sunny outlook on the world. Isn't wow. that something? Let me think about that for a second. It's, okay. It says here, um, Americans believe that anybody can be a millionaire. Not everybody believes that in other countries, but in America, they all believe that it's possible for them to become a millionaire. Well, that's why they come over here from other countries to start their businesses. That's right. That's the reason. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Uh, it also astounds many visitors how many Americans believe that almost anything can be fixed if you try hard enough. That's right. I like, I like this report here. This is a very positive American report. 
European countries especially look at things differently. They consider themselves more realistic and grounded. Oh. <laughs> no dreamers over there. Oh, well, oh, so wow. that, oh that's a little spin on it. <laughs> All right. So what's the next one? Um, Americans are far more personable and friendly than they ex- than other cultures expect. <laughs> hey, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I could I could replace the word Americans with New Yorkers. <laughs> Everybody thinks New Yorkers are rude. It's, there are yeah. some, yes. Yeah, there's some in, in any city of the United States. I, I, yeah, but I think the par- problem with New, New York is the accent. You, you know, if you ask somebody, hey, how do I get to 4th Street? And the guy goes, I, I tried down the road. You know, you think he's being mean to you. Yeah. But that's just the way he talks. Yeah, like he was inconvenient <laughs> because you asked him that question. <laughs> oh, come on. It's right th- can't you count? Yeah. There's third. It should be the next one. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's just that's just the way they talk, Galen. It's not. They're very friendly, yeah. and personable. Well, yeah. when I, when, when I, I, I took, don't have I don't have a problem with. Them. <laughs> yeah, but when I took the kids up there in 1989, and we were looking for the Hard Rock Cafe, I asked the policeman, "Where's the Hard Rock Cafe?" I didn't know where it was, and he said, "Are you from Nebraska?" <laughs> I guess because I, I was dressed different, you know, I had my Florida clothes on and my high heels, so <laughs> I guess it was. Well, just, I, w- I will admit, Nebraska is the state New Yorkers like to pick on. Just just so you know. <laughs> I yeah, I, 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 there's not a lot of people that don't like to make fun of the Midwest. I mean, it's just an easy part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so some people from Europe are afraid of traveling to the United States, and some visitors expect that they will be treated unkindly, especially the more foreign they look. So they intentionally try to look more American. Oh, I've seen this, too. Mm-hmm. And you can tell they're trying too hard. What are you? Oh, yeah, what exactly. Are you, what are you doing? Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> just be yourself. Um, you know what, Disney? Doesn't everybody look like a foreigner? <laughs> like when you go to a Disney? <laughs> it's funny. You can tell a tourist at Disney from a local at Disney because the tourists have the bright white sneakers and the locals you know, have their t- beat-up <laughs> shoes. <laughs> That's not true. I, I will tell you this. My, uh, my, my uh, son's girlfriend goes there every weekend. On. She like four or five times a, week, a month. I'm jealous. Oh, that's wonderful. So. She's got to have a pass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You couldn't afford to do that if you didn't. Does your son go, too? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he, he, he thought he had been there a lot, but no, she, she goes, like, every weekend. Wow. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Got to ask her what's the best restaurants. There's a lot of restaurants there. Mm-hmm. All right, um, I just got to find one that does not serve tartar sauce. I got to get off of this. <laughs> All right. It says, uh, um, Europeans are surprised that Americans are so curious to learn about their cultures. What do they think? We're all stuck up on ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> uh, well, are we? I mean, we're a very, uh, you know, centric, focused society. But then again, then again, the rest of the world looks at us. It's the same way. I mean, we're the pinnacle of what our world is. Yeah, yeah. Getting bad feedback. Are you? Did, does that help? Yeah. I don't know yet. Yeah, that's much better. I don't, oh, gosh, it's crazy. Okay. Um, uh, visitors are often surprised at how much, how charitable Americans are. Yeah, I don't know why they're surprised by that. I mean, that's that's... We're good at that. It, it says here, it, it astounds visitors from many countries that Americans will fight so hard against any government program that provides assistance to the poor, but at the same time, they'll give money to any charity that comes asking. Well, that, oh, yeah, that's I could, what our, oh my gosh. Yeah. How, exp, all right, explain that to the foreigner, because I could explain this. Explain it to the foreigner. Mm-hmm. Galen, what, do, what is your explanation? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, that's what our country was founded on is taxation without representation and um I, I i believe that our government would screw it up when that whenever we give somebody money we screw it up i think uh when when it comes from private entities whether it's from churches or local community groups getting together to to fund something or to help something it works better it just flat out works better you know, and what you're saying right there is is an explanation for some of us, too, because I've had people here that are born and raised here in America that for some reason think 
that Robert and I are not charitable simply because we're against a government program that portend, portends, is that the word? Yes. Or that says that it says it's going to be charitable. And it's uh, that exact thing you just said, Galen. We just don't know. I mean, there's always uh, a hierarchy in, in any agency that gets a lot of money. Exactly. That doesn't make it to the people it's supposed to go to. Yep, the administrators and all the way down to the workers. They get sure. a lot of money. Uh, let's see. Absolutely. Uh, visitors are surprised at how less judgmental we are about other cultures than they're led to believe. Well, that's because there's every culture around the world here. I mean, you know, we're we are exposed on a on a semi daily basis. I'll say to just about every culture in the world. You know what I mean? If you thought about it, you've probably met somebody from just about every culture on the planet. Yeah, probably, and you never yeah. and you could and you could never leave the country and, and experience that. That's right. In that's some right. way, shape, or form. I mean, from a Greek festival to the Irish festival to you know uh, the whatever Italian it is. Festival, yeah, yeah. yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Russianbrides.com. I mean, <laughs> like <they're>, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> uh, they're also surprised at how a CEO can go to lunch with a blue-collar sanitation worker and be on the same the same social status. It's because we have a constitution. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. I, oh, I see. see. That's a surprise, really? Mm -hmm. I, I guess they don't see that. I guess if you're royalty, you only eat with royalty. Well, you know, a lot of these countries have caste systems, whether right, it's a right. formal caste system like they have in India or if it's a not-so-formal caste system like they have in England where... You know, you, you have the haves and the have-nots, and then the haves can have a very healthy baby. And, uh, the have-nots, the, the, the baby isn't owned by the parents but by the government, and if they decide that the exactly. child needs to die, it'll die. Exactly. It's, that whole story with Alfie, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you, it's just so sad. It's just heart-wrenching. Just absolutely heart-wrenching. Do I know this story? It is. The story of it Alfie? Is. The, the one where the, uh, the child was... Um, the, basically, the, the state or England, England. that the child could not survive, um, and so they they said, "Okay, we're going to take it off of oxygen, and it's going to die." And the parents like, "No, no, 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 no. We we want to take it to, remember that to the United you know, we, States." Yeah, I just remember. Yeah, he just the died name. yesterday. No, no, no. This one happened yesterday. Oh, this is a oh, new this one. This is yesterday. Oh yeah, there was one where his name was Charlie. Exactly. That's the, same. the one. That's yeah. it, Charlie. Oh, I didn't where know there we was another one. We were going to try to bring him to the. Yes, it happens all the time over there. Just oh, not all of them are so sad. publicized. So they took him off of oxygen. He breathed on his own for ten hours, and his parents were trying desperately to get him out of the country. Then Italy decided that they'll make him an honorary citizen. The Pope came out. Italy decided to make him an honorary citizen, and to see if he could go to Italy to get this state-of-the-art care. And and the parents were forbidden to remove their child because the child doesn't belong to them; it belongs to the government. Gotcha. Right. And wow. So, and I read crazy. I read the article this morning, and and the parents gave them mouth to mouth resuscitation. Oh my God! To try to keep them alive oh. at the hospital, at the hospital where they could have put oxygen on them. They could have, you know, we we talk about our health care system and I'm not saying it's perfect but we would we would not allow a child to die right, unless right. we had done everything we possibly could and that's why our health care is so expensive but when you have a panel that decides who lives and dies which is what you have to have if you're going to have uh, government subs you know government one payer uh, health care you no longer have any rights once you walk in that hospital but the wow. decisions are made by a by a group of individuals who don't know you and don't care. Those stories. Just looking at the uh, spreadsheet. Those stories need to be told. I appreciate you telling us. I feel horrible about yeah. this. I didn't Alfie. know about this new one. Yeah. Be be wow. Because we were Absolutely. so. I, I was so enthralled with you know Prince William's baby's birth. It was all over the news and everything. Correct. I missed this story about Alfie. I feel so bad and, now. And that's and that's the that's the horrible that's the juxtaposition. Right, so right. you have this huge, you know, the, the royal family. He's what the fifth line, fifth in line for the crown. Mm -hmm. And then across town, uh, literally across town, they're allowing this child to die. Right, that's crazy. So, wow. 
you know, so what happened? One's on what would happen there, and one's just a regular working family. Yeah. Makes well, sense. One's on welfare. Yeah. What would happen if this new child, the, the royal child, what happened? I mean, God forbid. I don't want anything to happen to him. But what, I mean, what if he was in that circumstance? They wouldn't. Oh, oh my gosh! They give they give him everything they could. Absolutely, wow. they would, and and that's why it goes back to, uh, you know, what you said earlier about you know a CEO eating with a sanitation worker. Yeah. Because we're all equal under the law. We're all equal under the, our government system. Now, some people have more access and, and, can, and can buy a better lawyer. I, I don't disagree with that. But at the bottom line, we still have to stand in front of that judge if need be. Wow. It says, uh, here's, here's else. This kind of dovetails with what you're saying, that uh, in other countries, they're surprised at how freely we speak, even on a public forum, like a radio show. Uh, you can be yourself and get away with it. In in many countries, self-expression can easily be a faux pas. But in the United States of America, it is encouraged to be yourself. You know, you know, we're the only country on the planet that has free speech as an inalienable right. Going back to England, there was a guy who is um, sent to eight months in jail because he flipped off repeatedly. The speeding cameras, and in, in, again, this happened in London, uh, or in England, where he, he, they have all these images of him. Every time he passed out by a speed camera, yeah. he flipped it off, and they arrested him. Um, he was also had, like, a radar detector or a jammer, which is illegal. He got eight months in jail. Eight months in jail for flipping off a camera because it was a, a rude gesture, whatever they called it. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we really need to, uh, and there are people every day that are trying to, uh, you know, harbor our speech because, well, it's hate speech, and I, I don't know what hate speech is. It, it all depends on the, uh, the ear of the person listening to it as to whether it's hate speech. So yeah, that, uh, all, all that, speech is free. Well, the next thing on the list is that they're surprised at how sacred we uh, make Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is considered truly sacred in the United States. You're darn right. It should be. You're darn right is right. We, we have to, and we have to fight for it every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, censorship is a is a is a is a problem. I mean, it, it, people try to do it. Now, I, I believe that there should reper, be repercussions for everything that you that you say. Right. You should right. be held accountable for it. That I'm all for. Uh, but you can't go to jail for it. Unless it incites a riot or violence or something, um, yeah, I, I, I think we, it's something we need to really watch very careful. Uh, I have to end on a light one. There's there's some more serious ones. Let me just say some of these serious ones. Uh, Americans love trying out new cultures, blending their food. Americans yeah. uh, give more foreign aid than any other country. Um, Darn right, it's not even close. The amount of people who own We're like a, double the team that's in second, the country that's in second. The team. Double what they the are. amount of people who own a car surprises most visitors. But my favorite one is the one I say for last. They are surprised that when you enter a business in the United States during the summer. The business is air conditioned everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there you go. That's yeah. right. Even in the outside hallways, <laughs> breezeways. You know, and, and and having lived in in another country, we really do take for granted our infrastructure with things like power and water. Um, you know, when I lived in the Philippines, we, they would have blackouts for hours and hours every day, and sometimes you would go an entire day without having power, and so you just sit. You know, in the dark and the heat, and it's raining outside because it's either raining or 115 degrees. Hmm. And we just take for granted that we can just turn on a light switch and it's there. And God forbid it's not. God forbid you go home and there's no power. You know? Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Good segment today, Galen. Uh, where's the Bloodmobile? Hey, Bloodmobile today is at the Walmart right there on uh, Wedgwood Road. Edward Lane. Edward Lane. It's our favorite Walmart. Thank you, guys. All right. nice. Well, be careful out there, Galen. Thank you for what you do. Thank your colleagues for what you all do. And uh, we'll yes. talk to you tomorrow. Sounds great. Thanks, y'all. All right. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. 